Buffett Partnership Limited, 610 Kiva Plaza, Omaha, Nebraska, 68131, telephone 0424110, January 22nd, 1969. Our performance in 1968. Everyone makes mistakes. At the beginning of 1968, I felt prospects for BPL performance looked poorer than at any time in our history. However, due in considerable measure to one simple but sound idea whose time had come, investment ideas like women are often more exciting than punctual, we recorded an overall gain of $40,032,691. Naturally, you all possess sufficient intellectual purity to dismiss the dollar result and demand an accounting of performance relative to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We established a new mark at plus 58.8% versus an overall plus 7.7% for the Dow, including dividends which would have been received through ownership of the average throughout the year. This result should be treated as a freak like picking up 13 spades in a bridge game. You bid the slam, make it look modest, pocket the money, and then get back to work on the parts course. We will also have our share of hands when we go set. The following summarizes the year-by-year -year performance of the Dow, the partnership before allocation, one quarter of the excess over 6% to the general partner and the results for limited partners. Year 1957, negative 8.4% overall results from Dow, 10.4% partnership results, 9.3% limited partners results. Year 1958, 38.5% overall results from Dow, 40.9% partnership results, 32.2% limited partners results. Year 1959, 20% overall results from Dow, 25.9% partnership results, 20.9% limited partners results. Year 1960, 6.2% overall results from Dow, 22.8% partnership results, 18.6% limited partners results. Year 1961, 22.4% overall results from Dow, 45.9% partnership results, 35.9% limited partners results. Year 1962, 7.6% overall results from Dow, 13.9% partnership results, 11.9% limited partners results. Year 1963, 20.6% overall results from Dow, 38.7% partnership results, 30.5 limited partners results. Year 1964, 18.7% overall results from Dow, 27.8% partnership results, and 22.3% limited partners results. Year 1965, 14.2% overall results from Dow, 47.2% partnership results, 36.9% limited partners results. Year 1966, negative 15.6% overall results from Dow, 20.4% partnership results, 16.8% limited partners results. Year 1967, 19% overall results from Dow, 35.9% partnership results, 28.4% limited partners results. Year 1968, 7.7%. Overall results from Dow, 58.8% partnership results, 45.6% limited partners results. For the overall results from Dow, these are based on yearly changes in the Dow value plus dividends that would have been received through ownership of the Dow during that year. The table includes all complete years of partnership activity. For partnership results for 1957 to 61 consists of combined results of all predecessor limited partnerships operating throughout the entire year after all expenses but before distributions to partners or allocations to the general partner. For the limited partners results for 1957 to 61 computed on the basis of the preceding column of partnership results allowing for allocation to the general partner based upon the present partnership agreement but before monthly withdrawals by limited partners. On a cumulative or compounded basis, the results are Year 1957, negative 8.4% overall results from Dow, 10.4% partnership results, 9.3% limited partners results. 
Year 1957 to 56.9% overall results from Dow, 55.6% partnership results, 44.5% limited partners results. Year 1957 to 59, 52.3% overall results from Dow, 95.9% partnership results, 74.7% limited partners results. Year 1957 to 60. 42.9% overall results from Dow, 140.6% partnership results, 107.2% limited partners results. Year 1957 to 61, 74.9% overall results from Dow, 251% partnership results, 181.6% limited partners results. Year 1957 to 62, 61.6% .6 overall results from Dow. 299.8% partnership results and 215.1% limited partners results. For 1957 to 63, 95.1% overall results from Dow, 454.5% partnership results, 311.2% limited partners results. Year 1957 to 64, 131.3% overall results from Dow. 608.7% partnership results and 402.9% limited partners results. 1957 to 65, 164.1% overall results from Dow, 943.2% partnership results, 588.5% limited partners results. Year 1957 to 66, 122.9% overall results from Dow. 1,156% partnership results, 704.2% limited partners results. For 1957 to 67, 165.3% overall results from Dow, 1,606.9% partnership results and 932.6% limited partners results. For 1957 to 68, 185.7% overall results from Dow, 2610.6% partnership results and 1403.5% limited partners results. Annual compounded rate of 9.1% overall results from Dow, 31.6% partnership results and 25.3% limited partners results. Investment companies. On the following page is the usual tabulation showing the results of what were the two largest mutual funds they stood at the top in size from 1957 through 1966. They are still number two and three. They follow a policy of being typically 95 to 100% invested in common stocks and the two largest diversified closed end investment companies. 1957, negative 11.4% Massachusetts Investors Trust, negative 12.4% Investor Stock, negative 11.4% Lehman, negative 2.4% Tricontinental, negative 8.4% Dow, 9.3% Limited Partners. For 1958, 42.7% Massachusetts Investors Trust, 47.5% Investor Stock, 40.8% Lehman, 33.2% Tricontinental, 38.5% Dow, 32.2% Limited Partners. Year 1959, 9% Massachusetts Investors Trust, 10.3% Investor Stock, 8.1% Lehman, 8.4% Tricontinental, 20% Dow, 20.9% Limited Partners. Year 1960, 1% Massachusetts Investors Trust, negative 0.6% investor stock, 2.5% Lehman, 2.8% Tricontinental, negative 6.2% Dow, 18.6% limited partners. Year 1961, 25.6% Massachusetts Investors Trust, 24.9% investor stock, 23.6% Lehman, 22.5% Tricontinental, 22.4% Dow, 35.9% Limited Partners. Year 1962, 9.8% Massachusetts Investors Trust, 13.4% Investor Stock, 14.4% Lehman, 10% Tricontinental, 7.6% Dow, 
11.9% limited partners. Year 1963, 20% Massachusetts Investors Trust, 16.5% Investor Stock, 23.7% Lehman, 18.3% Tricontinental, 20.6% Dow, 3.5% Limited Partners. Year 1964, 15.9% Massachusetts Investors Trust, 15.3% Investor Stock, 13.6% Lehman, 12.6% Tricontinental, 18.7% Dow, 22.3% Limited Partners. Year 1965, 10.2% Massachusetts Investors Trust, 9.8% Investor Stock, 19% Lehman, 10.7% Tricontinental, 14.2% Dow, 36.9% Limited Partners. Year 1966, negative 7.7% Massachusetts Investors Trust, negative 10% Investor Stock, negative 2.6% Lehman, negative 6.9% Tricontinental, negative 15.6% Dow, 16.8% Limited Partners. Year 1967, 20% Massachusetts Investors Trust, 22.8% Investor Stock, 28% Lehman 25.4%, Tricontinental 19%, Dow 28.4%, Limited Partners. Year 1968, 10.3%, Massachusetts Investors Trust, 8.1%, Investor Stock 6.7%, Lehman 6.8%, Tricontinental 7.7%, Dow and 45.6%, Limited Partners. Cumulative Results 189.3% Massachusetts Investors Trust, 167.7% Investor Stock, 225.6% Lehman, 200.2% Tricontinental, 185.7% Dow, 1,403.5% Limited Partners. Annual compounded rate of 9.3% for Massachusetts Investors Trust, 8.6% Investor Stock, 10.3% Lehman, 9.6% Tricontinental, 9.1% Dow, and 25.3% Limited Partners. For Massachusetts Investors Trust and Investor Stock, these are compounded from changes in asset value plus any distributions to holders of record during year. And for Lehman and Tricontinental, these are from 1968 Moody's Bank and Finance Manual for 1957 to 1967, estimated for 1968. It is interesting that after 12 years of these four funds, which presently aggregate well over $5 billion and account for over 10% of the investment company industry, have averaged only a fraction of one percentage point annually better than the Dow. Some of the so-called go-go funds have recently been rechristened no-go funds. For example, Jared Tai's Manhattan Fund, perhaps the world's best-known aggressive investment vehicle, came in at minus 6.9% for 1968. Many smaller investment entities continued to substantially outperform the general market in 1968, but in nothing like the quantities of 1966 and 1967. The investment management business, which I use to severely chastise in this section for excessive lethargy, has now swung in many quarters to acute hypertension. One investment manager representing an organization with an old established name you would recognize, handling mutual funds aggregating well over $1 billion, said upon launching a new advisory service in 1968, the complexities of national and international economics make money management a full-time job. A good money manager cannot maintain a study's securities on a week-by-week -week or even a day-by-day -day basis. Securities must be studied in a minute-by-minute -minute program. Wow, this sort of stuff makes me feel guilty when I go out for a Pepsi. When practiced by large and increasing numbers of highly motivated people with huge amounts of money on a limited quantity of suitable securities, the results become highly unpredictable. In some ways, it is fascinating to watch and in other ways, it is appalling. Analysis of 1968 results. All four main categories of our investment operation worked out well in 1968. Our total overall gain of $40,032,691 was divided as follows. 
controls with an average investment of $24,996,998, overall gain of $5,886,109. General's private owner, average investment of $16,363,100, overall gain of $21,994,736. Generals, relatively $8,766,878, with an overall gain of $4,271,825, undervalued workouts of an average investment of $18,980,602, and an overall gain of $7,317,128. Primarily U.S. Treasury bills with an average investment of $12,744,973 and an overall gain of $839,496. Total income of $40,309,294 less the general expense of $276,603 including interest with an overall gain of $40,032,691. Few caveats, as mentioned in my letter two years ago, are again in order. Non-doctoral candidates may proceed to the next section. 1. An explanation of the various categories listed above was made in January 18, 1965 letter. If your memory needs refreshing and your favorite newsstand does not have the pocketbook edition, we'll be glad to give you a copy. Two. The classifications are not ironclad. Nothing is changed retroactively, but the initial decision as to category is sometimes arbitrary. Sometimes later classification proves difficult. For example, a workout that falls through, but that I continue to hold for reasons unrelated or only partially related to the original decision, like stubbornness. 3. Percentage results calculated on the average investment base by category would be significantly understated relative to partnership percentage returns, which are calculated on a beginning investment base. In the foregoing figures, a security purchased by us at 100 on January 1, which appreciated at an even rate to 200 on December 31, would have had an average investment of 150, producing a 66 in two-thirds percent result contrasted to up 100 percent result by the customary approach in other words the foregoing figures use a monthly average of market values in calculating the average investment four all results are based on a 100 percent ownership non-leverage basis interest and other general expenses are deducted from total performance and not segregated by category Expenses directly related to specific investment operations, such as dividends paid on short stock, are deducted by category. When securities are borrowed directly and sold short, the net investment longs minus shorts is shown for the applicable category's average investment. 5. The foregoing table has only limited use. The results applicable to each category are dominated by one or two investments. They do not represent a collection of great quantities of stable data. Mortality rates of all American males or something of the sort from which conclusions can be drawn and projections made. Instead, they represent infrequent non-homogeneous phenomena leading to very tentative suggestions regarding various courses of action and are so used by us. 6. Finally, these calculations are not made with the same loving care we apply to counting the money and are subject to possible clerical or mathematical error since they are not entirely self-checking. Controls Overall, the controlled companies turned in a decent performance during 1968. Diversified Retailing Company Incorporated, 80% owned and Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated, 70% owned had combined after-tax earnings of over $5 million. Particularly outstanding performances were turned in by Associated Cotton Shops, a subsidiary of DRC, run by Ben Rosner and National Indemnity Company, a subsidiary of BH run by Jack Ringwald. Both of these companies earned about 20% on capital employed in their businesses. 
among Fortune's 500, the largest manufacturing entities in the country, starting with General Motors, only 37 companies achieved this figure in 1967 in our boys, outshone such mildly better known but not better appreciated companies as IBM, General Electric, General Motors, Procter & Gamble, DuPont, Control Data, Hewlett Packard, etc. I still sometimes get comments from partners like, say, Berkshire is up four points, that's great, or what's happening to us, Berkshire was down three last week. Market price is irrelevant to us in the valuation of our controlling interests. We valued BH at 25 at year-end 1967 when the market was about 20 and 31 at year-end 1968 when the market was about 37. We would have done the same thing if the markets had been 15 and 50 respectively. Price is what you pay, value is what you get. We will prosper or suffer in controlled investments in relation to the operating performances of our businesses. We will not attempt to profit by playing various games in the security markets. Generals, private owner. Over the years, this has been our best category measured by average return and has also maintained by far the best percentage of profitable transactions. This approach was the way I was taught in the business, and it formally accounted for a large portion of all our investment ideas. Our total individual profits in this category during the 12-year BPL history are probably 50 times or more our total losses. The cash register really rang on one simple industry idea, implemented in several ways in this area 1968. We even received a substantial fee included in other income in the audit for some work in this field. Our total investment in this category, which is where I feel by far the greatest certainty regarding consistently decent results, is presently under $2 million and I have nothing at all in the hopper to bolster this. What came through like the Johnstown flood in 1968 looks more like a leaky faucet in Altoona for 1969. Generals relatively undervalued. This category produced about two-thirds of the overall gain in 1966 and 1967 combined. I mentioned last year that the great two-year performance here had largely come from one idea. I also said we have nothing in this group remotely approaching the size or potential which formerly existed in this investment. It gives me great pleasure to announce that this statement was absolutely correct. It gives me somewhat less pleasure to announce that it must be repeated this year. Workouts. This category, which was a disaster in 1967, did well during 1968. Our relatively heavy concentration in just a few situations per year, some of the large arbitrage houses may become involved in 50 or more workouts per annum, gives more variation in yearly results than an across-the-board approach. I feel the average profitability will be as good with our policy and 1968 makes me feel better about that conclusion than 1967 did. It should again be stated that our results in the workout area as well as in other categories are somewhat understated compared to the more common method of determining results computed on an initial base figure and utilizing borrowed money, which is often a sensible part of the workout business. I can't emphasize too strongly that the quality and quantity of ideas is presently at an all-time low. The product of the factors mentioned in my October 9, 1967 letter which have largely been intensified since then. Sometimes I feel we should have a plaque in our office like the one at the headquarters of Texas Instruments in Dallas which reads, We don't believe in miracles. We rely on them. It is possible for an old overweight ball player whose legs and batting eye are gone to tag a fast ball on the nose for a pinch hit home run, but you don't change your lineup because of it. We have a number of important negatives operating on our future and while they shouldn't add up to futility, they certainly don't add up to more than an average of quite moderate profitability. Memorabilia. As one of my older friends says, Nostalgia just isn't what it used to be. Let's take a stab at it anyway. Buffett Associates Limited, the initial predecessor partnership was formed May 5, 1956, 
with seven limited partners for family three close friends contributing $105,000 and the general partner putting his money where his mouth was by investing $100. Two additional single family limited partnerships were formed during 1956 so that on January 1st, 1957 combined net assets were $303,726. During 1957, we had a gain of $31,615.97, leading to the 10.4% figure shown on page 1. During 1968, I would guess that the New York Stock Exchange was open around 1,200 hours, giving us a gain of about $33,000 per hour. Sort of makes you wish they had stayed with a 5.5 hour, 5 day week, doesn't it? or roughly the same as the full year gain in 1957. On January 1, 1962, we consolidated the predecessor limited partnerships, moved out of the bedroom, and hired our first full-time employees. Net assets at the time were $7,178,500. From that point to our present net assets of $100,429,431, we have added one person to the payroll. Since 1963, assets $9,405,400, rent has gone from $3,947 to $5,823. Ben Rosner would never have forgiven me if I had signed a percentage lease travel from $3,206 to $3,603 in dues and subscriptions from $900 to $994. If one of Parkinson's laws is operating at least, the situation hasn't gone completely out of control. In making a retrospective survey of our financial assets, our conclusion need not parallel that of Gypsy Rosely, who opined when reviewing her physical assets on her 55th birthday, I have everything I had 20 years ago, it's just that it's all lower. Miscellaneous. Although the investment environment is difficult, the office environment is superb. With Donna, Gladys, Bill, and John, we have an organization that functions speedily, efficiently, and pleasantly. They are the best. The office group, along with their spouses, one apiece, I still haven't figured out how I should handle that plural, and children have over $27 million invested in PPL on January 1, 1969. Assorted sizes and shapes of aunts, uncles, parents, in-laws, brothers, sisters, and cousins make the PPL membership list read like our crowd, which, so far as I'm concerned, is exactly what it is. Within a few days, you will receive... 1. A tax letter giving you all PPL information needed for your 1968 federal income tax return. This letter is the only item that counts for tax purposes. 2. An audit from Pete Marwick, Mitchell and Company. They have again done an excellent job for 1968, setting forth the operations and financial position of PPL, as well as your own capital account. 3. A letter signed by me setting forth the status of your BPL interest on January 1, 1961. This is identical with the figures developed in the audit. Let me know if anything in this letter or that occurs during the year needs clarifying. My next letter will be about July 10th, summarizing the first half of this year. Cordially, Warren E. Buffett, W.E.B.G.L.K.